I'm not like against dating or anything. The thing is like you can't always, I don't know, your body can be very deceiving. So I'll say something like, you say you're addicted, but were you addicted to salty foods like chips? I was addicted to junk food in general, um, but sugar was the big thing. I also gotta say, here's the thing, okay. Like do what makes you happy, okay? If eating five donuts a day makes you happy, great. Like it's about your lifestyle and your happiness doesn't have to make sense to others, okay? So for me, cutting out sugar, that makes me really happy. Um, okay, well, okay, on the weekend, like I would say I was stricter. I mean, I, like, how do I say this? I'm, I'm, I'm building a lifestyle, so it's like, once in a while I'll have it, like on special occasions. That's kind of what works for me, right? Sugar on special occasions, but not in my everyday lifestyle. That makes me happy, and my happiness does not have to make sense to you guys. There could be someone in the comments right now hearing, oh, cutting out sugar. Don't, don't feel bad because you heard that I did that. If you like eating three donuts, like if it doesn't hurt your body, you feel good, you exercise a lot, or maybe you don't exercise. I don't know, okay? The point is, is your happiness does not have to make sense to others. That's all I have to say. And, you know, for me, like that caused me pain. It caused my body a lot of pain. And I'm gonna be honest, the more, the more comfortable I got, the actu actually the more uncomfortable my mind got. Um, that's a personal thing for me. So what was the book called that changed your mindset? Um, I'll tell you guys now since you're on the stream, but letting you know, I do talk about it in episode one. Every episode, there's a little segment called book recommendation of the episode. It's based a glow up book recommendation. So every episode I share a glow up book that, um, a book that helped me glow up. But I'll tell you now, the book was called Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. And that's the book I talk about in episode one. I just want to know what books you read. Dude, watch every episode. And honestly, if you don't even want to watch every episode, just like skip around until you see it. It's the same little segment. It has the same border and everything. Every episode I share with you a book that I read in my glow up journey. Um, do you ice skate? No. Uh, anyway, so I can't, how, I, how can I get a clear mind to overthink? I got to say something else. I was doing a lot of research about sugar and junk food. Did you know? that it actually causes your brain stress. Um, it, it's really crazy. And I actually dive into it a little bit, not in this episode as much, but okay, if this sounds as interesting to you, do you guys wanna hear something in episode? Okay, I need to leave this live stream because I need to work on episode two. Like I really need to work and I really wanna try to do these like worksheets. I'm gonna try my best, but anyway, I'm gonna give you guys a little sample of something, um, a couple things that, tell me if you think this is interesting. There's two paragraphs in episode one that I wasn't sure if I wanted to share because I was like asking my dad, I was like, dad, do you think people are going to get bored? Like, I don't want to lose people. But at the same time, I was like, honestly, if they're watching this, like they might have the same problems as me. So this would be interesting to hear. Okay. This is the first thing I say in episode one. One of the things I said. So I said, before I share the four stages of addiction, I would like to make a disclaimer. I never blamed any of this on anyone except myself because I was making these choices at the end of the day. But from a lot of self-studying and what I know now, through incessant exposure to advertisements, we are being reminded thousands of times a day that instant gratification is the way to happiness. Billions of dollars are spent to persuade us to keep pursuing happiness the wrong way by literally rewiring our brains so that you crave the things that bring you further from your goal. Our attempts at eating healthfully are thwarted by a limitless supply of delicious and cheap calories. This depressing scenario fuels chronic stress, and this stress is toxic to the brain, damaging the very parts of it that help you have a sense of agency to feel control of your life. And in your attempts to cope, you again turn to the instant gratification, making it harder to break the neural circuits in your brain that trigger and reinforce this behavior. The escape hatch moves further and further away. I don't know if I should, I, I, you don't think I lost anyone, right? By sharing that. So that's one, of, if there's any topics you need to cover out, leave it for your podcast to discuss. Oh, I love that idea. Thank you. I like that a lot, actually. I'm going to do that. Okay, and the last, the other thing I'm gonna, I, I, I talk about is this. 
So first of all, I was I, I explained why when I was in Taiwan, I restricted from junk food and it felt like the worst pain in the world. I said, why did like, why did turning down junk food hurt me so much, right? And I gave you two reasons. Reason number one was that I didn't see the junk food as a negative. I was deceived by the delicious calories that brought me joy in the moment. Restricting felt like I lost a great big joy. Now I know that when you truly understand and educate yourself about the effects your food choices have on your body, mind, and life, you can exercise self-control and restraint without deprivation. Okay, so that's fine. But the second reason, tell me if I lose you in the second reason. Second reason was that the food I was eating contained highly processed chemicals. Food manufacturers spend obscene amounts of money to detect the most enjoyable level of sweetness in a candy bar or the perfect amount of zest in pizza crust. Entire divisions are devoted to enhancing the combination of sensations. They hire food engineers to analyze the dynamic contrast in their processed foods like sweet, salty, creamy, crunchy. James Cleary said that with natural unprocessed foods, you tend to experience the basic same sensations over and over. After a few minutes, your brain loses interest and you begin to feel full. But junk food keeps the experience interesting, encouraging you to eat more. They strive to find the, they, you lost me. Okay, okay, yeah, I knew it. I literally knew it. I was like, that, that paragraph was, like that one, I felt like a little lost. I felt like I was gonna lose people a little bit. I No, no, okay, the thing is, is this. I want to just cut down that paragraph. I still wanna talk about, so basically I said second reason was that I was eating highly processed food. But I think all I'm gonna say is basically that like food manufacturers spend obscene amounts of money to make junk food interesting. They keep it, they make it interesting by um, finding the, pres- the perfect combination of salt, sugar, and fat that excites your brain, keeps you wanting more. With natural unprocessed foods, you experience the basic same sensation over and over. Wait, okay, I'm gonna read it now once through. Tell me, this is the paragraph that I think I lose people. Okay, I'm gonna read it once. Tell me if I lose you. Food manufacturers spend obscene amounts of money to detect the most enjoyable level of sweetness in a candy bar or the perfect amount of zest in pizza crust. Entire divisions are devoted to enhancing the combination of sensations. They hire food engineers to analyze the dynamic contrast in their processed foods like sweet, salty, creamy, crunchy. James clearly said that with natural unprocessed foods, you tend to experience the basic same sensations over and over. After a few minutes, your brain loses interest and you begin to feel full. But junk food keeps the experience interesting. Yeah, I think all I'm gonna do is just shorten it. Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna shorten it. And then at the end, I basically just say this. I said, how sad is that? Companies spend way more money on creating the perfect chemicals to keep you addicted and buying rather than caring about your health. Um, anyway, oh, also, okay, so tell me if you think I should address this. I did not want to address this because it's just like not getting to the point of like the four stages of addiction. This is why I feel like I need to change this around, but look, tell me if I should include this. Tell me if I should include this. I feel like I really don't wanna include this, but I feel like I also need to tell you guys why I didn't change. In Taiwan, I discovered a book called Brain Over Binge. The book says we have two brains, an animal brain and a logical brain. The animal brain houses your automatic behaviors. It's responsible for basic acts of survival, such as food, water, oxygen. Your logical brain is your higher self, your higher sense of thinking. Your voluntary motor neurons are in your logical brain, not your animal brain, which means you are 100% in control of your actions. The book says you just need to listen to your urge, not act on it, and it will soon fall silent. I tried this and it worked for a while until it didn't anymore. There is one catch to this process working. You have to want to change. And the author doesn't go into how to succeed in wanting to change. Change happens when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. And that's why I was stuck. I didn't see any of the behaviors involved with change as a positive. 
Change is uncomfortable because it requires you to step outside of your comfort zone. To reach for the life you want, you have to fall in love with discomfort. And I was weak with a very low paint on. You said that already once. Yes, it's in episode 16, but you have to wonder, like, I think a lot of people would ask, it's like, why did you not change if there's an answer? Like you read the book about binging, it told you how to change and it worked for a while, but then it stopped working. I remember, I'm like, I know that I'm in control of my actions, but why don't I, why, why can't, why isn't it working anymore? It's not working anymore because I didn't want to change anymore. I just wanted to stay the way I was for some time. Um, but do you think that I should say, maybe, okay, tell me if, okay, see, this is exactly why I wanted to cut the episode down a bit. Explain people who want to change why they can't. Yeah, I, I was just going to explain why I didn't want to change. Like, because the author talks about how to change, but the author doesn't say how to succeed in wanting change. How do you want the change? Anyway, here's my question. Do you think that, okay, basically I, exp I explained what the author, the book, do you think I should explain the book or I shouldn't? I said in Taiwan, I discovered a book called Brain Over Binge. The book says we have two brains, an animal brain and a logical brain. Um, and then I say, I don't think I want to say all that again about how, um, like, I don't want to say like what the book talks about brains. So do you think I can take it out or no? I basically, like I was going to take it out and inst instead just say this. I was just going to say in Taiwan, I discovered a book called brain over binge. The book says you just need to listen to your urge, not act on it. And it will soon fall silent. I tried this. I tried the method or, or I could say this. In Taiwan, I discovered a book called Brain Over Binge. I tried the method and it worked for a while until it didn't anymore. The process works, but there's one catch to it. You have to want to change. So I could say that instead. I could say I tried the method in the book and it worked. Do you think that that would be better? Okay, which one's better? I can, op option number one, in Taiwan, I discovered a brain, okay, this is option number one. In Taiwan, I discovered a book called Brain Over Binge. The book says we have two brains, an animal brain and a logical brain.